Hello everyone, welcome once again to my channel. This is Janice May. And um, before that, let me put on my accessory to go with my pajama. Prepare to see me in this pajama in all my videos <laughs> because I just love it so much. So this necklace, um, this is going to be another story. <laughs> uh, it's made out of grass. They're very light, very, very light. And I just strung them on elastic since they are light. So just uh, a side story. Um, I think it's nice to string a necklace using elastic because why not? It's very easy on and off. So look, there you go. That's it, no fuss, easy peasy. So um, the video for today is we are going to cut strips of paper from this magazine. Uh, it's not a magazine. It's a made up magazine, <laughs> like I made it so you can cut it into, into strips of paper to be made into beads. So I made this so we can make it into paper beads. So there's about uh, six pages, but when you take out the staples, I did it like that. So you can cut long strips So from this is 16 and a half inch wide because it's hard to find a magazine that's that wide and and that's not stapled um, because this way you can lay it out, take out the staples and then cut and measure them. So that's what we're gonna be doing and uh, this will be on my Etsy shop so you can also get to try it. So Let's go ahead and do this. So as you can see, this makes long strips. Uh, this is 16 and a half inches long. And if you want to make um, half of that strip, which would make a different kind of bead, a different shape, a smaller tube, then you can just fold the paper in half and cut it in triangles. So you cut two at a time, and I'm gonna be showing that to you as well. For illustration purposes, I have an eight by 11 paper here. So if we are making a three fourth inch paper strips, our first mark would be half of three fourths, which is three eighths, so that we will achieve the slant of the first cut. And then mark the three fourths, three fourths until the end. So you wouldn't get three fourths here, um, but the rest of it would be three fourths. Now here in the bottom, you will just have the three fourth inch mark from the tip, from the edge. So you know what I'm saying? So this will be all three fourths and then we're gonna line them up and I'm going to show that to you in a time lapse. So this is how you line your paper. So this is where we started, where I started. The, that's the three eighths mark, the edge, to give it that uh, slanted edge. And then we mark three fourths all the way. And on the other side, it's just three fourths all the way. 
well you're not getting three fourths here because that's the uh, end of it um then i cut after i marked that page the long page i cut them into strips and then we're going to roll them into beads I feel like I need to show you how to make the beads from start to finish. So these are the finished beads. If you cut them into one inch, you have this big bead. And these are the three fourth inch. And if you roll two strips together, you get like a chubby three fourth inch. And now we need to uh, put them in toothpicks ready for glazing. So we're kind of doing the prep right now. So what you do is just take a scotch tape and wrap the ends. Okay, you need to prepare a few of these. Now you have your toothpicks ready. You just need a styrofoam. This is just one of those takeout things. You know, we do a lot of takeouts now. So um, what I do, this is where you would stick your toothpick. And I would put scotch tapes on here so it will, uh, maintain the hole it will not go bigger and it will like make it more stable you know so that's what i did just a tip that you can do without if you want to if you don't want to <laughs> so um then we're gonna be glazing our paper beads so i would suggest that uh, you have like a little a little fan uh, because it dries a lot faster when you have like a little fan just you know you can buy them at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot or places like that so now they are all sitting in the toothpicks ready to be glazed and what I'm going to use is my vibrance on the amazing base so first two dips in the amazing base and then two dips in the vibrance now I know that mo most of you just uses the vibrance so you you can do that and just coat this with like an Elmer's glue or white glue and dip it in the vibrance. You can also do that. So whatever works <laughs> or whatever kind of glaze you're using, it's fine. And I'm just going to be using my cute handy dandy mini fan, which I got in one of my travels in Korea. Uh, one of those things that you just got to have. <gasps> so anyway, on to glazing. The missing base has to be shaken before using it. The vibrance, no, you don't have to. So I'm just going to show you this first dip. So just do it like so, like what, two seconds? And Also, another tip is that uh, the, um, the amazing base can be uh, diluted with water. If you find that it's a little bit thick, then you can just put in 
water and it's totally fine. The vibrance, I don't think you can do that. So just the amazing base. Okay, so then I'm just going to just stick it on here and then uh, it'll be easy if you have the fan that can just stand on the table instead of holding it like this, but I'm just doing this just to show you. I don't have the stand-up fan. I have a big ceiling fan and you can also do that. Just set it right, right there. For the second coat of the amazing base, what you can do is also, you can just brush it on after dipping it. So the amazing base guys kind of get thick. You can uh, dilute it with a little bit of water. So the beads are looking good right now. After the vibrance, then it will be perfect. It's going to be water resistant and can last you for a long, long time. So after this, again, uh, put it under an electric fan for about 10 minutes and then apply the vibrance. After uh, it's a little bit dry, it's not completely dry, but as you can see, it's like glistening. So that's after the two uh, coats of the missing base, and then we'll go ahead and dip it and the vibrance also twice so same thing i'm going to um, use a brush but you know it's not brush handy but just take the excess off you can do the brush like I was doing earlier, or you can just roll it to the side. Just to take off the excess. This is what I do sometimes. And do the rest again, put it under the electric fan after dipping all of it and then do the second dip and here's your finished beads look at that they all came out so nice um i had two rejects so from 13 beads i ended up with 11 beads because that can happen sometimes um so now we are going to make something i'm thinking something easy like a bracelet an elastic bracelet so like I promise you we're gonna do this from start to finish so I thought the African beads I found this at a show a bead show and will go very well with this paper beads it will give it that earthy look so um what I'm going to be using is the 0.8 mm elastic, uh, 0.7 will also be fine. Um, the 0.5 would be, I think, too thin for big beads like this. So um, if I'm going to make like a seven and a half inch bracelet, so let's say just to give it an allowance I'm going to cut like 10 inches and then you can string it from the spool or um, have like a little 
stopper right here so that you know <laughs> the beads is not going to be running away so then what you do is just string it I love the look of this necklace so far. So we are just going to be finishing it. Uh, some of these African beads are like, uh, like flat, flattened, but I don't mind that if two of them are different. It just adds um, character to your piece. So let me see if this is i may have underestimated the elastic here but this is about eight inches right now if i'm going to um be making it for myself it should be this should be fine this would end up around seven inches so I'm going to go ahead. So what you do is very simple. You just tie the elastic like this, a square knot. So right over left and then left over right. And then just pull it tight. So I'm going to let it sit for about five minutes. And once in a while, I would want to tighten it. And then we'll come back to it. It's so pretty. Look at that. Now, we still have three beads left. So we don't want to let that go to waste either. <laughs> so we're going to make bracelets with this too. For this big bead, I think I have little round beads so this is just a part of my collection look at that look how tiny they are so actually we also sell paper strips that can make oh my goodness ah! that can happen <laughs> isn't that the worst thing that can happen to a beater is when you spill beads on the floor and you had to pick them up well i pick each one of them because each one of this bead were cut rolled and glazed four days individually so they are very precious so a, a lot of love went into making these beads just like when we made these beads it took me the whole night if not the whole day the next day today so now we will i will string this bead with using this little beads and we are going to also do the same thing with this so now i'm just going to show you let me bring this closer how to um, hide the knot of your elastic. So you will end your elastic on a bead that has the bigger hole, which is this paper bead. So um, just cut it about one fourth of an inch. And then what you do is pull the knot inside the bead to hide it so there so you don't see the knot anymore and this came out really nice and look what I did with this the big bead and it's accented with the blue paper beads and I put the blue um, evil eye on there um, because it's just it's matching to the blue beads and this is a little bit bigger this will actually fit a man it does fit me still because I did not want to break up the pattern of 777 seven, seven, since we have three beads the bigger bead in the middle so we used up 
all of the paper beads that we just made. I think the bracelets came out really well. Um, I will have a link in the description box to the Etsy shop, my Etsy shop. Also, I will be posting pictures there and on my Facebook page, it's a big community of paper bead fans, so check it out. Um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, hit the subscribe button. It will make us happy here at Janice May, my team and I. So um, that's it. If you have any questions on glazing, cutting, or anything paper bead related, uh, make a comment and I turn the notification on so that I can see all comments and I can answer your comments like within 24 hours. <laughs> okay, I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching.